of the week. What about the role of politics in, in the uh, economic uh, future of blacks in this country? Again, I would draw upon the uh, experience of other countries and other, other uh, groups. I can't think of a single group anywhere in the world that has risen from poverty to affluence through politics. There are any number of groups that have risen from poverty to affluence through almost every other conceivable means. When I look at the groups that have had spectacular rises, like the Jews or the Chinese, they are almost invariably groups that stayed away from politics. And they usually stayed away until after they became affluent. Some of them, them could then afford to go into politics. But that was not the mechanism by which they got where they are. What was the mechanism? Uh, basically work, skills, saving. Now, you're saying then that the, that the train in the black community, in terms of voter registration and political power, uh, political empowerment, is on the wrong track. I think that if what you expect out of that is economic advancement for the mass of black people, now if all that you're looking for is some advancement on the part of the, of the leaders, or if what you're looking for uh, is something like what happened in the Civil Rights Revolution, where you needed to get the Southern Jim Crow system broken, that was an enormous achievement through politics, as I point out in the book. Uh, so it's not that politics can't do anything. It's a question that politics, like everything else, has some things it can do and some things it can't do. And from what I've seen of groups around the world economically, one of the things it seems not to be able to do is raise groups from poverty to affluence. Well, who, who controls the society? Those that are in, in the political control or those in economic control? Those with economic skills tend to advance, whether they have any political power or not. And those without those skills tend not to advance, even when they have great political power. Well, what about dominating a society? Do you dominate a society through polit politics, or do you dominate it through economics? Depends on how you define it. But in Malaysia, for example, the Malays have overwhelming political domination of their society, and they use it ruthlessly against the Chinese minority. The Chinese still make double the income of the Malays, on the average. You make a statement in your book, Dr. Sol, and I would like to quote, discrimination has been pervasive, but not pervasively effective. Yes. What does that mean? It means that people have discriminated against other people wherever they've had the power to do it, almost everywhere in the world and almost every period of history. Some groups are kept back by this, and some groups, it seems to make no difference whatever. Insofar, for example, as you have entrepreneurial skills, the fact that people didn't hire Jews in the 19th century didn't stop Jews from hiring each other and setting up and dominating industries such as the garment industry or the uh, beginning of the great Hollywood movie studios and other areas of the economy. Uh, it is the skills that are crucial and, not the, and not, not the fact that other people are willing or unwilling to hire you. Even groups that, that have a great animosity towards other groups will nevertheless hire members of those groups with skills in the long run if there are enough of them to make it worth their while. What's the lesson in that statement for black Americans? Skills are what matters. Uh, if other people will not uh, acknowledge your skills in the short run, then those same skills are useful in the black community with other blacks. Uh, it's what has made other groups advance from poverty to affluence. I know of nothing else that's really done it. Skills and, of course, the, the, the work and the savings.